um, they they get a bonus of up to two points, and the two sounds like really really small amount, but don't be fooled. That's like percent, so this is two hundred percent, and uh, this is zero bonus. So uh, yeah, it, it's a huge deal if you fund your armies completely or not at all. If you don't fund them at all, they just run and uh, yeah. Would you want to fight if your country didn't pay you at all and expected you to die for them? No, it's not going to happen. So uh, when our new units spawned, they are at really, really low morale and they need to uh, spend their time. Uh, you, you gain more morale at the start of each month. So now they got their morale up enough to actually move. So we'll uh, combine all these units. And after doing that, we'll uh, bump up our uh, uh, military spending and uh, then wait for a couple of months to, uh, for them to actually gain uh, all of that bonus uh, morale that they can get from being uh, fully funded. And then we'll go and uh, stomp Riga's face. I haven't actually even touched uh, trading. Uh, I did notice that our merchants were already doing stuff, so I didn't really want to uh, poke my nose into it uh, any further than that. But let's go and explain a bit about how this whole thing works whilst uh, waiting for our treasury to go up slightly so that we can actually afford this war without uh, taking out any loans. So, there are set uh, points of uh, uh, in the game that are trade nodes. One is over here in the North Baltic Sea, this one, which is called the Baltic Sea, like <laughs> as you would expect. And all this blue, all these blue provinces factor in to that particular trade node, regardless of who owns them. And uh, that leads into this pie chart. Uh, here you can see who gets what percentage of the trade that is going on in here. Ours is 15% uh, of the entire trade that is going on here, which is worth 5.43 uh, ducats a month. Uh, here you can see how much of that trade is uh, stays here and is actually uh, cashed out by, uh, by the uh, nations that uh, are present in this uh, this particular trade node. So, out of those five point uh, four five, or actually the entire of, of the entire sum, uh, five point four five is the amount that stays here, and the rest goes here to Lubeck. Uh, you can use your merchants to push uh, trade down downstream, like, uh, or rather upstream, for example, to Krakow here, if you want it. But uh, pushing <laughs> against the current, so to speak, is really ineffective. I think it's like one-fifth of the strength that you get by pu uh, from pushing it downstream. So that's kind of the problem I had with uh, <laughs> doing the Baltic Sea as the greatest trading node uh, in all the world. Because only from Novgorod or Krakow can push more trade in this way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we can, of course, if we get uh, insane amounts of uh, merchants just roaming about the place, we can push from Kazan to Novgorod and then from Novgorod to here, or from Kiev to Krakow and Novgorod and then to here and so on. So. Uh, it's not impossible, but it's really unlikely that this will be the most lucrative trade node in the universe. Considering that, for example, Antwerp here, it doesn't have anything that goes out of it. Everything just flows here and nothing goes out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, th this is like a lot easier. You can just sprinkle your dudes around in London and in Bordeaux in um, Genoa and uh, uh, what is this one? 
Nah, heck. Frankfurt, and yep, and then in Lübeck. And each one of those is just pushing in here. And you don't need to specify that you're collecting from this na the trade node. If your uh, capital of your nation is within the area of effect of one trade node, you automatically collect from it. If you place a merchant uh, in that node, you gain a tiny bit of extra, like, I don't know, 10% extra money. Just magics out of thin air, so out of this 5.5, if you were to retain all of it yourself, you'd magically get 6.05 total because of that 10% extra. But instead, if you uh, have uh, your capital like around here, you can just forget about using that merchant in this node, and you can just pl plonk one here, 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 here. Like if you have five merchants, you can just push insane amounts of ducats into this and just collect by having your uh, capital in there. So uh, yeah, that, that's a thing <laughs> that that can transpire. And also, uh, trade and uh, trading powers tend to try and suck as much. Um, income as possible towards their uh, uh, capital trade nodes uh, be simply because of this uh, bonus that you get by uh, uh, having your uh, capital in there the natural collection that happens through that so uh, yeah it's going to be hard to uh, bump up this uh, this trade node but we'll do our best we'll do our damnedest okay we have uh, close to seven ducats I I hope that's enough. Let's actually go and check out how how this is going. Yeah, Lithuania, you're not really doing nothing. Okay, and Brandenburg did get S Saxony and Thuringia. So, actually it's now six provinces worth of stuff, and both Saxony and Thuringia have their armies over here, sieging uh, the Teutons at Neumark. And the Teutons can't actually get here because, uh, yeah, Poland is in the way. Uh, and they're not going to give them access. So, all these armies... I was wondering why they were just standing around over there not doing nothing. They can't get to the war, <laughs> warring factions. They just have to faff about over there. And, uh, yeah, it's either going to be a white piece or, um, or the Teutons are going to give away this uh, province of Neumark or do some other concessions because they can't get any bonus war score in this in this fight. The, these uh, like, tiny little German states, they are going to siege this one and uh, yeah, get some points from that and they are just going to win. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, you are whining about uh, maintenance. Yeah, that that's a thing, but right now we are sitting pretty at 8.2 which means that we are going to declare war on uh, Riga. Let's uh, make doubly sure that this isn't an awful, awful idea. Ah, they're guaranteed by Lithuania. Oh, crap. For 20 more years. My god. And Lithuania is hostile towards us, and uh, yeah, they have insane amounts of uh, border friction against us. Eesh. I should have probably checked that before opening my mouth about getting Riga and spending all that money on uh, units that now cost me maintenance that I don't need. Oh crap. Ah, no, 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 no. That was, again, a stupid mistake. I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to uh, improve relations with uh, Lithuania. I'm hoping that if uh, Lithuania likes us more than it likes Riga, it might not uh, jump on our face if we uh, grab uh, Riga at some point. So yeah, uh, that is one really important thing that you can do with diplomats. Uh, just uh, tell them to improve relations. 
uh, they bump your relations up with that uh, nation by one each month that they are in there up to a hundred I think maybe even more if they are friendly towards you there you can see improved relations went up by one point uh, you can get other modifiers such as we get uh, plus 10 modifier that goes down by one each year for honoring our alliance with uh, the two towns by joining that war and uh, what else um, you can uh, either ask to uh, join an alliance or dissolve it you can form coalitions against other nations mm, and then just hope that other people join them and coalitions work such that if any one person from that coalition either declares war on the coalition target or if the coalition target declares war on any of the coalition members then all of those coalition members are uh, instantly at war with uh, said nation so that's kind of a good way for loads of loads of uh, tiny little nations to gang up on a bit nasty brute and tr maybe give him a second uh, thought uh, before he comes and stomps all their faces. Uh, influence action, we can uh, try to enforce peace between two nations. Uh, usually takes a lot of muscle to do that and uh, good relations, so yeah, not going to happen in our case probably for a long time. We can uh, proclaim guarantees so that if uh, such as Lithuania has done with Riga, so that if some uh, uh, nation decides to grab like this one province minor, uh, we can then step in and go, No! You can't has! Our first event. Cool. Uh, yep. One of your advisors argued with the bishop during the last banquet, and now the church has sent an inquisitor to question him about his ideas. You could spend your influence to defend him, or bow to the church and gain Pope's benevolence. Yeesh. So, um, yeah, we can either have our uh, philosopher, that gives us prestige, he just dies. And in its place we can then get an inquisitor that would up our um, uh, the strength of our missionaries, which we don't need because all of our provinces are the correct religion, at least from our point of view. And we could get papal influence, which I'll explain a bit later after this. Or we could lose a lot of papal influence and gain administrative power. I'm okay with this. I am okay with losing just all of our papal influence. I don't mind one bit, and I like our prestige dude. Now, uh, what you can use your papal influence for is influencing gar cardinals that uh, in the end uh, perform this uh, perform this conclave that choose who is the next pope and uh, whoever controls oh this is this is the curia I think yeah uh, whoever has the most cardinals here which in this case seems to be Austria. Yeah, all these other guys only have uh, one member each. They get uh, lots of bonuses, like the uh, stability cost. So the cost in admin points to bump up your stability uh, is 5% uh, cheaper. You get uh, one extra diplomat. We have two, we'd have three. Our prestige goes up naturally just by existing. Um, those two possible advisors mean that we have more people to choose from. Right now we have three, we'd have uh, we'd have five uh, if we were the Curia controller. Uh, we get even more papal influence and we could have one more li military, military leader without it affecting the amount of military power we get. So it's good if you can manage to pull that off. However, uh, through uh, my really limited experience in the game, it's really hard to get enough papal influence to actually gain the cu control in the Curia. Because of, like, we get a lot of points, in my opinion, like 7.46, and we are a tiny nation. We are a theocracy, so I think that's, yeah, that gives us one whole point. 
and from the fact that we are all of us uh, Catholic, we gain five and so on. Uh, however, we can only store up 37.32 uh, <laughs> papal influence. And again, in my limited uh, experience, this, uh, this cost to, to influence these guys to vote for someone that would be beneficial to us goes up insanely fast and only the bigger countries that can store up more papal influence can actually like, manage to pull off having enough future cardinals here out of which these get selected as their predecessors die. So yeah, I'm, I'm just okay with not playing that game at all unless like, some th insane luck and chance gives us the option of uh, uh, just going for it at some point and try and trying to get the curia controller position uh, okay but yeah since actually we can't claim uh, riga anytime soon uh, let, oh let's uh, do one more thing um, how can we check uh, what is uh, Lithuania's option uh, opinions of the nation? So Riga, yeah, they they aren't all that uh, fussed about them. It's like meh, they're all right, but nothing special. So if we can get Lithuania to like properly love us, like, we are their best bu bestest buddies ever they might not uh, just jump in on Riga's behalf if we were to uh, declare war on them. I am not sure about that. Let me just check if there is a way to ask them to stop uh, guaranteeing. Nope, doesn't look like it's there. Hmm, well, that is a bummer. Well, crap. Oh, hey! Lithuania's got an army over here, and somehow Brandenburg has managed to pull their troops out over here, and the two dons are going to go kick their butts. I think uh, they must have gotten um, uh, access through someone over here. Or uh, is someone allied? Thuringia, Saxony, Brandenburg? Any one of them allied with? Nope. Okay. Uh, do you have military access from someone? Poland, Saxony? Hmm. Maybe that alliance with Poland allowed them to get their troops over here, but that doesn't explain how Lithuania's dudes got over here. Uh, let's try to deduce how this is going about. Weird. Well, I can't, uh, for the life of me, deduce how uh, how these troops got here and uh, these troops uh, that have actually just been killed got over here. However, it look, does look like our uh, buddies are here beating down on uh, Brandenburg, Thuringia and Saxony. They okay by me. I don't mind one bit. Now, let's uh, continue on with our uh, explanation of the game rules. Uh, oh, and uh, I should remember to mention <laughs> this has gone on for ages probably already, but I will be cutting this video into smaller chunks. But I don't have my timer here, so I'm just going to go uh, go on uh, keeping the game uh, going and explaining all this stuff uh, till I feel like it's a good place to end, till probably till I've finished uh, doing the pre uh, preliminary explanations.
So uh, moving on to economy screen, here we can see where our income is coming from and these are the uh, bonuses and uh, penalties that we get, get from and wherever we get them from, like the, our production efficiency gets plus 10% from technology and rate efficiency is plus 10% from somewhere and uh, this is the then the raw amount of ducats that we get, get as an income. So this is the amount we get and here is where we are spending it on. Spending it on our advisors, our, uh, could spend it on colonial maintenance and, mis and missionaries if we had any. So nope, not, no money going there. And then finally on our army maintenance and fleet maintenance. And of course income minus expenses means how much per month uh, our national balance state changes. We can also uh, grab loans e uh, either forcefully if our balance is zero and we are going to the negatives then we are forced to take out this this loan. Uh, loans are for five years I think usually and you can have up to 131. That might go up on down or, or down depending on our economic situation and uh, different ideas and technologies we have. Um, but I'm not really all that certain about it. I try to refrain from taking loans unless necessary because it increases our inflation. And inflation is bad. <laughs> inflation makes everything cost more. And it's a bitch to get rid of unless you take certain ideas, which we are going to go into more detail later on. You can also, if you are at war, you can raise war taxes, which lowers your uh, maintenance costs, um, but it ups your uh, war exhaustion. And uh, war exhaustion is again really annoying. Uh, it uh, basically means how uh, fed up your nation is about constantly being at war and losing man manpower and uh, uh, boats and uh, getting there promises sieged and so on and so forth. Uh, primarily it uh, gives you a chance of rebels spawning and uh, there are other negative effects. Uh, I can't really show you by floating over here because we don't have any. Uh, if we ha oh, had, uh, it would show the exact effects. But maybe we will uh, come, that, come to that later on when we are actually uh, in a war that affects us negatively. Uh, I tend to try not use this too much because of that uh, war exhaustion increase. But yeah, it's a decent way to try and keep your army maintenance high till the end of the war and you can actually adjust peace out and drop the slider and uh, keep your expenses low through that. Here we have the trade screen. You can do surprisingly li little from this. You can just uh, view your bonuses and trade range. Our merchants can re trade, reach trade nodes within this range. So we, uh, even if we knew about, I don't know, Japan, uh, we couldn't send our trader there uh, unless our trade range allows it. And here we can see uh, which trade nodes uh, are out of our range. So we can't ev we can't go to Sevilla, Granada, Aragon, uh, Italy, anywhere. Just really, really close by right now. This gets uh, bumped up uh, by tech quite a lot. Our uh, trade efficiency uh, maximum is 200%. And uh, yeah, uh, trade efficiency is how efficient your nation is at trading. Duh. Uh, first, it impacts the power uh, your merchants can wield in a trade node by acting as a direct increase in percent. Secondly, it is the basis of how much income you can get out of your merchants. So yeah, bonus to <laughs> trade activities, like how much you are uh, of the trade you retain or push. Uh, and yeah, this uh, trade steering, uh, how well our uh, merchants are ca able to push trade from, uh, uh, for example, Novgorod's node over here to uh, Baltic Sea node over here. So we get a plus 8% bonus to that from our Navy tradition, which is in the military tab. We get to it eventually. And uh, just uh, flat out income to our trade efficiency uh, or trade income. Uh, 
comes from our trade efficiency, this 10%. That's the way I should have, uh, should have mentioned it. And finally, mercantilism. Uh, provincial trade power modifier. So, uh, whatever power we uh, gain uh, on on this um, no 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 trade on uh, here to our trade power that uh, defines how large a portion of this pie uh, we get is uh, influenced by mercantilism. And you get more or less of this through events, mostly, I think. Here we can see if we are embargoing someone on, or if someone is embargoing us. And how much of my income currently comes from the trade. And these are the trade nodes that we can uh, reach and where our merchants currently based. So from Novgorod we are actually pushing just 0.1 ducats forward into the Baltic Sea node which is where we are collecting and retaining uh, 1.2 ducats a month or 1.3 however uh, yeah uh, here we have our technology tab uh, I already mentioned we are the Western group so everything costs uh, one just 100 percent without any modifiers for us so it's 600 points 600 of these that we get six six and four a month so yeah teching takes time ages and ages you can get a lot of bonuses like your advisors can give you minus 10 percent uh, each uh, to each uh, like administrative diplomatic and military if you get the right ones if your neighbors are more advanced than you have higher techs the, then that can give you a, a neighbor bonus of uh, I think up to 20% or something events can play uh, a huge part in that as well and yeah there's just a lot that can affect uh, the cost um, of your uh, um, technologies um, let me actually just pause this for a second. I need to go and do some stuff and be right back. Right, and I'm back. So, uh, further explaining what these different technologies give you. Uh, administrative gives you uh, these advanced form forms of government, as well as ideas. This is the ideas tab. We're going to go to it next. Rest assured, it's really important. Uh, you then have uh, production efficiency raised from that, uh, as you could uh, see over here. Production gives you money, just uh, plain and simple. Uh, however much your provinces produce these uh, goods, you uh, you gain money from it. Simple as that. So. Uh, you get 10% every couple of levels of uh, your administrative tech. And finally, it gives you buildings that you can build. Temples, constables, farm estates, workshops, courthouses, spy agencies. And these all give you bonuses to that province. So, national ideas, bumping up uh, production, buildings and ideas. Really, really useful for, like, uh, the macro play of getting more out of your land. Uh, diplomatic idea, uh, ideas, uh, Diplotech, uh, I already kind of explained, uh, gives you better ships. Uh, you get uh, heavy ships at level 3 and then they upgrade at level 9, 15 and so on. And um, yeah, th these aren't insignificant, these <laughs> upgrades, they're like almost double the amount of guns, for example, I, or I think it's 60 cannons that you have in the Karak compared to the early Karak, and your hull size gets to 30. Okay, it's, it's 150 percent, but still, th these aren't insignificant changes that uh, happen to these ships, and um, your old ships don't upgrade instantly to these, so you need to get rid of your old ships and build new ones if you want to take advantage of these uh, better better ships that you get. Uh, once you reach uh, level 22, so like a couple hundred years from now, uh, your naval attrition uh, rate goes down a bit. Uh, if you have at least one level of it, uh, of, uh, of this tech, you can place merchants and uh, 
yeah these are then trade efficiency trade range colonial range um, naval maintenance goes up uh, at the same time as you get uh, better ship designs usually so in the end uh, this does affect you negatively as well so your ships cost a lot more but still it's worth it uh, your naval morale goes up and finally you get uh, again buildings uh, which give you generally more uh, trading power in your provinces uh, docks and dry docks help uh, repair your ships as well as shipyards and yeah other ass assorted uh, bonuses usually trade related or ship related